Hey everybody, DJ Legion here, back with you. Um, <laughs> got a uh, text from the mighty Scott Waters today. Said he hasn't seen me on YouTube for a while, and so if uh, if one person's texted me, that means ten or twelve more people are also thinking the same thing. So thought I'd get up here and do a video. Um, so um, let's see what's happening. Uh, the big news today is my Alice Cooper tickets have arrived. Uh, this show is going to be October the 20... There's the cat, of course, because I'm t on the camera now. October 26th. So, um, it's a ways off. I hate buying tickets. I love to get tickets to shows, but I always hate waiting. Once you have the tickets, you're like, ready. <laughs> ready to go. Uh, and it's months away. In fact, Black Sabbath uh, uh, will be uh, September 15th, I believe. Still waiting for those tickets to show up. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Alice Cooper. Saw him back in 1990 on the trash tour when I was living in uh, Europe. Saw him in Germany. Uh, it was a great show. Brittany Fox uh, and Great White opened that show. But anyway, let's get to the vinyl. Show you what I've been getting. Uh, I have more stuff here than I can actually show in one video, but we'll just do what we can. There's a couple of seven inches that I picked up. The New York Dolls, Fool, Fool, Fool for You Baby, um, custom labels. This was a record store day, uh, 2011 uh, release. I paid 10 bucks for this, including shipping, got it off of eBay. Love the New York Dolls. Don't actually have this particular uh, album on vinyl yet. This is off the album. Dancing backwards in high heels. I do have it on CD, but um, we'll eventually get the final as well. So, your dolls, love them. Next up is a grail for me uh, to a point. <laughs> this is Tony Orlando, "Bless You," 1961 on Epic Records. You can see how young he looks here. Um, take it out of the plastic. Once again, uh, the good stuff you keep in the paper sleeve, the acid-free paper sleeve, and you that way your picture sleeve doesn't get damaged and doesn't damage your uh, vinyl. Uh, the scoop on this is, you know, he had a couple of hits off of an album that he released in 1961, "Bless You," and there was another track called "Halfway to Paradise." And um, so both of those songs did okay, broke into the top 40. Um, so his pop, pretty boy, pop idol vibe was working for him. Uh, but then, of course, in 1962, the Beatles came along. And overnight, all of the pretty boys were no longer cool. And so... Their music just got swept away by the Beatles, the Stones, the Who, and all the rest of them. Um, and so that was the end of that. And then in 1970, Arista Records signed a new band called Dawn. They had a catchy tune called Candida. Um, and the label really didn't think the vocalist was fit for the band. Uh, so they called Tony and asked him to put vocals down on the track, on the track Candida. Uh, he was still pretty jaded from um, how was everything just went south overnight back in the early 60s. Uh, but eventually they did convince him to, uh, to sing on the track and they released it. And of course, uh, we all know the rest. He went on to have his big pop singing career just 10 years later. But anyway, this is the original 1961 Tony Orlando Bless You 45. Pay eleven fifty to get this, which is a good buy. I'm now looking for the album, the original album from 1961. I see those forty to a hundred dollars, depending on uh, the condition. Um, I'm looking to pay a little less and still get one in decent shape. So I'm waiting for one to come along. Um, I got an upgrade, Matt King Cole. This this is my original, which is the, wait, that's backwards. This is my original, which is in great condition. Um, this is a mono pressing, probably a 70s reissue. 
But I came across this one still in the shrink wrap. So it's even nicer. This is the stereo pressing. And um, yeah, I have more Nat King Cole than any other artist. So now they're both pretty nice, but now I have the mono and the stereo pressing of this album. Uh, here we go. Got this at a clearance rack someplace. Let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. Bob Malkey's My My Bearcats, live at the Sale Inn, which is a nightclub in San Francisco, 1958. This is a great uh, Americana, I guess I'd call it, slash a little bit of a swing sound. Got a banjo, drums, trumpet, clarinet, uh, stand-up bass. Anyway, yeah, this is great stuff. Um, and there was apparently a nightclub called the Sail Inn. That might have been on Fisherman's Wharf, uh, late 1950s in San Francisco. Uh, this is fabulous. Um, I love the history of it, <laughs> just for that. The music is great. The recording quality is much better than I anticipated. Paid two bucks for this, by the way, um, on or Hooli Records, and they they kind of specialize in. Uh, there's their logo. They kind of specialize in uh, this type of stuff. This old school blues, Americana folk, you know, from the 30s. 40s, 50s, 60s. This is what this label kind of does, is they keep this music alive. This was pressed in 1988. Um, so, 30 years after the fact. And I also love on these old albums, the notes. I mean, I bought this blind. Um, didn't know anything about the band. But this thing goes into great detail about each member of the band and every song on here. So you go from a blind buy to not only loving the music, but having a good deal of information about it. So, Bob Mielke's Bearcats, live in San Francisco, 1958. I've even tried to track down photographs of this club, The Sale Inn, on YouTube. Uh, no luck yet. Um, if there's any photographs that were taken inside of it or outside of it on the street, um, no luck at this point. So that's something else that's fun and interesting with these old records is to see if I can get the history of the venue. Oh, Don Williams, I Believe in You. Got this one also for a couple of bucks. This is from 1980. This has his big hit, I Believe in You, which is the title track. Uh, yeah, but what it basically for that song. I haven't played this one yet. Um, I mean, it's country. There's not a lot of country in... The vinyl community, for some reason, uh, I don't know. It's just you know, it's not as cool and hip as jazz or heavy metal, I guess. But anyway, so me and LJ, I think, are the only two people uh, in the VC that are showing country music per se. I think maybe um, only vinyl uh, might be spending some old school country as well on his channel. More country and western. Hank Williams Jr. Wild Streak, this is mint sealed from the late 80s, 1988 to 1990. Um, see this sticker, Give the Gift of Music. This did some time at a Hastings Music back in the day. Uh, this was towards the end of his fame. <coughs> um, so I picked this up once again a couple of bucks. And um, the hit song on here was... If the South would have won, we'd have had it made. <laughs> um, not a big hit out here in Berkeley, but um, in 1988, 1990, I was in Louisiana and Texas. Um, so I had obviously heard that track and heard of this album. So anyway, Bo Cephas, Mint Sealed. Um, yeah. The Silvers, I might have showed this in the last video. 1976 on Capitol. This album was called Showcase. Yeah, I remember I showed this now. Um, Boogie Fever was the hit. Uh, they had another track the year before, I think, with Hotline or the year after. Another hit song off a different album. You don't hear much about the Silvers anymore. It's great stuff. Um, and this guy here, Edmund, this is the one standing on this side of the lineup. He put out a solo album, Edmund Silver. 
either right before or right after the Silvers broke up in the late 70s, I guess, or early 80s. Um, I'm going to track down that solo record and, and get a copy of it. But anyway, 70s soul, it's good stuff. Uh, black and blue, 12-inch single. The, <laughs> the back is blank. The track is called Without Love, which was the title track of one of their albums. Tommy Thayer from Kiss uh, was in this band at the time. Uh, the same track is on both sides. Went to radio, you know, promo, not for sale, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, black and blue, great stuff. This is a unique piece, um, Kiss related. So, yeah, there you have it. I paid two bucks for this one as well. Lena Horn, give the lady what she wants. Uh, this is probably dating to the 60s or the, I'm not sure. I didn't look this one up yet. I did play it, it's really good. Um, yeah, RCA Records, show you the back. Um, like I said, I haven't looked up the date on this, but it's dating to the probably 55 to 65. Um, so probably 57, 58, actually. That looks about like they designed the OPs back then. So it's great. I played it one time. I paid two bucks for this one as well. Billy Joe, the nylon Did I show this one already? I think I did on the last video as well. Nylon curtain. Um, I have a lot of Billy Joel now, actually, just kind of by default. Um, gosh, I must have six of his albums at this point. Um, anyway, the Nylon Curtain. Uh, what year was this out? 1982 on Columbia. So, good stuff. Oh, this is fabulous. Jimmy Witherspoon at Monterey on Hi-Fi Jazz, which is a label out of California, uh, L.A., Hollywood. Um, this is a phenomenal record. It's phenomenal. I paid 15 bucks for this. Uh, it's worth every penny. Great jazz musicians, including um, Earl Hines, Ben Webstein, Roy Eldridge, Vernon Alley, Mel Lewis, Coleman Hawkins, and Woody Herman all played with him on this record uh this excellent this was recorded october 2nd 1950 october 2nd 1959 was when this was recorded um this looks to be a reissue fairly recent it's 180 gram um but it it's made like the original albums from the 50s with the brown cardboard uh, stock and they it just has the two pieces folded up and then the paper all that has is paper on the front and bottom holding it together it doesn't have the where they take the extra piece of cardboard and tuck it in and glue it like they did in the 70s and 80s um, so it looks to be it's either a very very clean original which I doubt because it's a little too clean but it probably is a reissue that was just done to look like um, like a vintage album uh, made like a vintage album. But anyway, it's fantastic jazz. Great, great stuff on this thing. $15. This was worth every penny. So I was stoked to get this. All right. What are we at here time-wise? Oh, I don't even know. It doesn't say. All right. Uh, the Radio Years. Charlie Spivak and his orchestra in 1943 to 46. This also is fabulous. Great. Uh, great big band swing stuff female vocals on a few tracks um, yeah great stuff and once again it's mono and I'm on London Records and uh, they're probably pressed in the UK to be honest um, yeah yeah pressed in the UK yeah London Records anyway once again the back you know I don't know anything about this guy or his band bought this blind two bucks but look at that. Look at all that information I'm going to get. It's got information about every song, about the people that played in the group. It's great. I think it turned on to some great new music and learned about the group. Fabulous. The Dramatics, 1978. The album is called um, Do What You Want to Do. Uh, do What You Want to Do. Great 70s soul. And um, this is on ABC Records. It's a great record. I played this already. It's fantastic. Soul, funky, grooving. It's really, really an amazing record. Paid two bucks for this one. 
the dramatics. Um, similar to the spinners from Isis and, you know, though that type of sound. The New Blue Bloods, Next Generation of Chicago Blues. This came out in 1987. Um, and there's some writing on the cover. Another score I picked up for a couple of bucks. Um, this is on Alligator Records, which is the blues label. Um, as far as I am concerned, once again, a little bit of information about the, the artist. It's just a sampler of artists coming out of Chicago in the 1980s. Um, yeah, but it's on Alligator Records. That was good enough for me. Uh, I've, I've, I've yet to buy anything on that label that wasn't good. So you're getting a sample of some more modern blues artists from Chicago, which is a famous blues city. Um, I have played one side of this. And it's fine, you know, like I said, it's Alligator Records, it's great blues. So, and, um, yeah. Oh, look at that, I got a stack of stuff already. Uh, this is a remarkable record. I paid, I believe, $15 for this one as well, maybe even a little more. 1959, The New York Taxi Driver. These are just candid recordings of taxi drivers in New York City. Um, cats whining. <laughs> it's on Columbia. Um, you know, it's just candid, honest conversations about it. And this is 1959, so the... It's like a time capsule on vinyl, basically. You're really getting to hear the accents, the old York Tax City accents, and um, the way they're talking, the views on women, and the taxi life, and family life, and baseball, and marriage, and art. Just, you know, the passengers and experiences they've had. Uh, it's fantastic. What a time capsule. What a uh, document to the period and the city. Um, I was stoked to get this. This is very, very unique. I thought about, um, oh gosh, Brendan Young, I think his name is. Brendan Young. I thought about him a lot when I, when I was listening to this. I said, this is right up his alley. This is very, very unique. Um, he would love to get uh, something like this in his collection. Uh, this is the kind of thing he would show. But yeah, it's really great. Seventeen dollars, I think, quite a bit of money uh, for for this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, got live if you want it. The Rolling Stones on London paid ten bucks to get a copy of this. Not the best quality recording, um, but I don't have any Stones on vinyl, believe it or not, until now, uh, until this one. And it's on London Records, which is uh, the better label, uh, the the European label. So, yeah, there it is. My first Rolling Stones album on vinyl. Got live if you want it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I got to send a shout out to LJ, who doesn't watch my channel, but I watch his. And not too long back, he showed this album, Stingray, um, which I believe are from. I don't know. They're not from here. They're from like New Zealand or Australia or somewhere. Anyway, um, this is great music. I um, he showed this on his channel, and I got onto my uh, Google Play account, looked these guys up. It's great stuff. So I tracked down a copy of this album on eBay and bought it. It's on the Carry Career label. Uh, C A R R E R E label. Career. I don't know. But anyway, Stingray. It's great stuff. Great uh, '70s Boston sticks. Foreigner, maybe. Uh, that kind of vibe. Um, really, really good. Great song on here called Better the Devil You Know. Um, so, it's really good. Really good stuff. Stingray, LJ, turn me on to this. If you see this, thanks so much. And I got another one. Once again, LJ, giving me the hookup. Give me the scoop on great bands. British Lions on RSO Records. Just, this is what was left over from Mata Hoople when Mata Hoople broke up. Three of these, three of those guys formed this band, the British Lions. Uh, see if I can get a date. A date, a date. No, I don't have a date. But anyway, the 70s, I believe. Um, yeah, great stuff on this album as well. Another one that LJ turned me on to, a band I hadn't heard of, didn't know about. Um, so, which is great. That's one of the best things about the VC, actually, is, um, you know, you're, you're getting turned on to these great new bands. Uh, 
that you don't know about, but other people do know about them. Um, Channel 33 RPM, Scott Waters, Jerry Higgins, um, uh, gosh, LJ, of course, now, uh, Fishman. A lot of great uh, bands that I'm getting uh, music that I'm being made aware of, like uh, British Lions. And I think we'll do, let's see. Oh, i tell you what I did get. I finally got a copy of this. Hallelujah. Damn. Abbey Road on vinyl. This is a mid-70s pressing on Apple. Paid $17 for it. Uh, and it's about damn time. Um, yeah, $15.99. Apple label. Yeah, it's about time, man. Crap, I've been looking for this album for two years. Um, so, now I have it. Stoked, The Beatles, Abbey Road. Awesome, I don't need to say anything about it. We all know how great it is. Okay, one more. Uh, I'll just do this one. Yeah, John Coltrane, I Love Supreme. Here's another one I've been meaning to get. Uh, this is a promo MCA issue, probably from the 80s, based on the label. It has the blue label with the rainbow. Um... Yeah, I've been meaning to get this album for a while. And, of course, they do have the reissues out for, you know, $22.99, $24.99, however much they are. But I found this one for $10. Uh, like I said, a mid-'80s pressing on MCA. And, um, yeah, I'm stoked. 1964 was when this was originally recorded. Uh, stoked to have this. Uh, still need to get Miles Davis, kind of blue. Um, looking for a decent copy of that. Um, but sell it for the reissue, you know. But, but anyway, yeah, starting to build the jazz collection up a little bit now. Uh, with the, the, the classics, the ones everybody knows. Coltrane, Miles Davis, <coughs> and so on and so forth. Um, so... Anyway, I guess that's enough for this video. I still have more. <laughs> I still have more. But we'll get to those maybe in a week or so. Um, gosh, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subbed, please do so. I still haven't crossed 200 subs. I have been at 196, 97, 98 subs for months. Can't cross the, the, the 200 mark. Yeah, that's, I can't seem to, to pass it. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and subscribing and commenting and all of those things. Uh, I'll put up something next week, and until I do, you know what to do. Turn up the music. Turn down the drama. Yeah, we could do a little more of that. Turning down the drama uh, in this country right now, huh? Good advice. Nothing new. All right. I'll see you soon. Have a great, great weekend.